I don't really know how to open this. I'm not planning on making any entry into the video community or announcing grand plans for the future. I just have a few things to say. I've been interested in religion for some years, from the outside and in a disapproving manner. As I lack any physical commitments of my own, I notice some things about Christianity as practiced today that only an outsider would see. Mostly it doesn't actually have much to do with the Bible. It's widely known that those who claim to be Christian often don't have much interest in their professed faith. They may flick through the Bible from time to time, or even attend church, but gain most of their understanding for a sort of cultural osmosis. This is a source of amusement to atheists and of some distress to the more devout Christians who express much concern over the matter of just how to define true Christian and devote a great deal of effort to combating these uh, falsehoods or unbiblical teachings. It's become something of a cliché in atheist circles to pick one of the sillier verses of the Old Testament and point out that this is ignored today. I am not going to do that. Quite the opposite. Even among the stricter forms of fundamentalist, not to mention the politicised aspect of the faith, the religious right, a lot of their most sacred beliefs owe little, if anything, to the holy text. And this is something that needs attention drawn to it, both as a way to expose a potential weakness of the religion, but also from the perspective of the Christians. After all, if you're going to be a Christian, you might as well do it properly. It seems appropriate to start with something seasonal. Christmas. I hate Christmas. I hate everything about it. The socially obligated spending, the inevitable reception of DVDs where films have already seen, the forced merriment, the family arguments over an appropriate level of festive decoration, the desperate rush to buy that last oversized turkey, the sickeningly sweet Christmas films, and above all the emptiness of it all. It is a celebration of itself, lacking any foundation. Some traditionalists talk of it as a celebration of Christ's birth, but just how much of Christmas is really about that? As holidays go, Christmas is a bit confusing. It incorporates ancient traditions, modern traditions, ancient traditions which were forgotten and then revived, traditions which no one can trace anymore, and a lot of misconceptions about where these traditions come from. It will be quite an effort to exhaustively list all of them, so let's just focus on the important question. How many are Christian in origin? How many of those are from the Bible? And how many of them are entirely unrelated? We can start with the name. Christmas. A contraction of Christ's Mass, where Mass refers to a traditional church service. That was easy. It's not from the Bible, but it's certainly Christian. What about the date? Not so much. The Bible doesn't specify a date for the birth of Christ, not even a year. If you assume all the stories are true, which is pretty silly, then you will see that the birth must have been before the death of Herod the Great, who died in 4 BC. Straight away we can see that the calendar isn't going to be much help here. The Bible doesn't contain any directives to celebrate the birth of Christ at all, so there is no reason to include a date. Early Christians didn't celebrate Christmas, it wasn't established until the 4th century. Which brings us back to the interesting question of the date. Why December 25th? There doesn't seem anything special about the date, and even at the time there were already disagreements on the subject. Christians in the 4th century were not alone. The religion was expanding rapidly through converts, many of them former Roman pagans. When populations convert in mass in such a manner, they don't simply abandon their old customs overnight. They reform their traditions to conform to the new religion. Temples to pagan gods are converted and sanctified as churches. Festivals are repurposed. December 25th was an important date in the Roman festival calendar, being close to both the popular drunken revelry of Saturnalia and the more low-key festival of Sol Invictus. The party plans are already laid and people weren't going to give up their festival just because the religion changed, so December 25th it was. That's name, yes. Date, no. 
How about some of the others? Start with the obvious seasonal imagery. Snowflakes, snowman, penguins. There's little point in researching any of that. It's clearly not biblical. The same goes for the clearly modern, like the worthless kitsch of Christmas movies. Food, wine, these things are mentioned in the Bible, but not in any manner relating to the nativity story. And the only feast mentioned is the Last Supper. That's not Christmas. It has its own traditional celebration. Keep reaching. Candy canes, often said to be symbolic of the purity of Christ's sinlessness and the blood that he shed. No. Invented in the 19th century, certainly not biblical, and any symbolism that they may have was certainly added after the invention. Presents. To most people, the best part of Christmas. Unless you get socks. Well, there are presents given in the Nativity story according to the Bible, which is where Christians claim the tradition came from. But the Bible doesn't say to celebrate by giving presents, and the tradition is more likely to be another piece of Saturnalia, repurposed along with the date. So, maybe Christian, but probably not. The Nativity scene and associated play? Well, straight out of the Bible with that one. It does involve hybridising the two Gospel accounts together, but undeniably biblical. Family get-togethers? Not from the Bible. Decorations? Again, not from the Bible. These are traditions, but there's nothing inherently religious in them, let alone biblical. The tree. Something of a confusing point here. The Christmas tree is an ancient tradition and a modern one. It became popular only in the 19th century, but had been a feature on and off for centuries before as a more local tradition, mostly around Germany. It wasn't in the 19th century that it went from local tradition to a worldwide phenomenon. It goes right back to pre-Christian times. It's yet another pagan celebration repurposed to Christian ends. But is it in the Bible? Surprisingly, yes. The decorated tree goes back so far, it's not only in the Bible, it's in the Old Testament. Jeremiah 10, abridged. Do not learn the ways of the nations, for the practices of their peoples are worthless. They cut a tree out of the forest, and the craftsman shapes it with his chisel. They adorn it with silver and gold. They fasten it with hammer and nails so it will not fall. No amount of reverb will ever make me sound godly. That's the Lord himself saying in no uncertain terms and quite clearly not to decorate any trees. Interesting how few Christians seem to know about that verse. They may however have credit for the star on the top. That is something they added to the old pagan tree, symbolic of the star of Bethlehem. Which brings me to my final point. By now it should be apparent that if one were to take Christ from Christmas, then the holiday wouldn't actually change noticeably. The winter celebration was around before Christianity, and it may well be around after Christ joins the gods of Egyptian, Greek and Norse culture as a historical curiosity. I am far from the first to notice this. With all these seasonal talk of the war on Christmas, I'd like to draw the focus to an actual war on Christmas, one waged by Christians. Led by this man, the ridiculously devout Puritan Oliver Cromwell. Following his victory in the English Civil War in 1651, England was under Puritan rule until the restoration of the monarchy in 1660. Puritans did not approve of Christmas. They regarded the holiday as unbiblical, full of pagan and ungodly rituals, and an excuse for drunkenness, gluttony, and all manner of other fun things which the Puritans would not tolerate. Worst of all, they considered a Catholic holiday, invented by the Church rather than ordained by Christ. This was a real war on Christmas, culminating in Parliament passing an ordinance in 1647, while the Civil War was still underway, making celebration of Christmas a punishable offence. The shops of London were compelled to remain open on Christmas Day, mention of the holiday was stricken from church books, 
and in parts of the country, soldiers were tasked with searching homes for evidence of excessively celebratory meals. While the English War on Christmas is the best known case, it was not the only event in which Christians, believing themselves to be preserving the purity of their religion, have endeavoured to purge the heathen holiday. Many Puritan colonies in the New World repeated the effort. The Massachusetts Bay Colony maintained the law banning Christmas from 1659 to 1681. Another such law existed in the Plymouth Colony, Boston, and various colonies along the Connecticut River. Yes, I'm just reading off Wikipedia. If they war on Christmas, they should ask, are they really defending Christ, or are they just defending a pagan corruption? Maybe they should look to the Puritans for guidance on this one, and rid us of this overgrown celebration of Santa, sin and spending.